Now there are many limitations to the uh, valence bond theory as you all know like if some uh, you can say uh, some expert try to give certain kind of theories or something there are many people who are sitting around just to criticize him. So likewise there are certain criticized points uh, of the valence bond theory which were actually actually the limitations of this theory and just look at the board that what were, were the, those points. So first is that it could not explain the magnetic character of the compounds. As you already know that when I just took an example and I tried to explain you, so I just told you directly that uh, due to the experimental studies it is a diamagnetic, it is a paramagnetic, so here you need to pair up, here you don't need to pair up. So that means there is no relevant reason behind the magnetic uh, properties, right. So this is one of the most important uh, you can say the limitation of the uh, this thing, the valence bond theory. Second is that it could not explain the color of the coordinate uh, compounds. As you all know that it is the characteristic property for the coordination compounds that they form, uh, they show a certain kind of excitations due to energy gap we did in the properties also. So it uh, like it does not focus on that because it is a main characteristic property we cannot neglect it. So this theory should actually uh, you can say that uh, should uh, explain something about the color of the compounds but it does not. So it, it is again a limitation to this theory. Third is that it does not told us about the reaction rate and mechanism that how fast or slow the reaction is going to take place as we all know that the formation of coordination bond is actually a slow process we all know in today's time but this theory actually does not try to explain about the reaction rate or the mechanism so again this is a limitation to this theory. And you, you have seen that, that in certain um, cases when I took the examples, somewhere the rearrangement of electron was required, I was doing that and somewhere I was just trying uh, to tell you that just leave it as it is because it is diamagnetic or paramagnetic. So again, the re, uh, there is no a definite kind of rule which can be followed in the all cases. So it is again a limitation. Now, as I told you that it can make use of inner orbital complex or outer orbital complex as the valence uh, this thing the Pauling actually tried to explain that the, by the use of the inner D or the outer D uh, the complex is going to classify into two categories the inner or the outer but still there is uh, somehow something is lacking in the, the this thing the uh, uh, participation of the orbital so again it is a limitation to it and you know that uh, we know that in the covalent bond whenever the covalent bond is is formed it is formed by the mutual sharing of electrons so when you are forming a covalent bond you are just seeing that yes uh, it is contributing a one electron it is contributing one electron they are pairing up and they are forming a covalent bond but this kind of thing you don't found in the after the formation actually likewise in the coordination compound when the bond is formed there, there is again um, uh, this thing uh, the shared pair but you cannot make uh, make it out that it is a covalent bond or a coordination bond after the formation. So there should be a certain kind of distinction that uh, just by looking at the formula we should know that uh, in this the coordinate bond is present or in this the covalent bond is present that means there should be a certain distinction but there is no distinction uh, the Pauling actually told us that how we can distinguish between the covalent or the coordination compound. So these are the few major limitations actually which just led to the failure of this valence bond theory and gave rise to the crystal field theory but still um, hats off to Pauling because he tried to actually to explain many things he made us familiar according to the inner orbital or the outer orbital complex or the shapes or the secondary valencies and the primary valencies by the Werner but still they because they have possessed certain kind of limitations so we need to look for uh, a different kind of theory that is the modern theory that is the most acceptable theory that is the crystal field theory. So now we are going to start with that theory.